In this video, I'll talk about Shigella. Now, I would caution you to first watch the Salmonella video because Salmonella and Shigella have several overlapping features. And what's really important to know for your exams is how to differentiate these two because that oftentimes will show up. So Salmonella was the video I published just before I'm going to publish this Shigella video. So if you haven't seen Salmonella yet, stop what you're doing, watch my most recent video prior to this one, and then come back and watch Shigella. So Shigella is a gram-negative rod that's oxidase negative, facultative intracellular, and non-lactose fermenting. It is non-modal because it has no flagella. It also has no production of H2S. And both of these features differentiate it against Salmonella, which does have flagella and does produce H2S. So first high yield point is that Shigella has no flagella. Memorize that, that rhyme. Flagella or Shigella has no flagella. Shigella has no flagella. Shigella is transmitted fecal orally. And as we'll see, that kind of explains some of the symptoms. Pathophysiology, Shigella has an enterotoxin known as the shigatoxin. What's really high yield to know for exams is the mechanism of the shigatoxin. And that mechanism is that it inactivates the 60S ribosomal subunit, which in turn decreases, decreases protein synthesis in the intestinal cells. It also has an endotoxin, is acid stable, which is really important for conveying infection because due to its acid stability, it's relatively resistant to gastric acid, which is to say a low infectious dose is required because you only need to get a little bit of Shigella into the system because gastric acid won't break it down. And if we contrast that versus Salmonella, in Salmonella, it wasn't acid stable, it was acid labile. And what that meant is that in Salmonella, you don't have resistance to gastric acid. It's easily broken down. And so in Salmonella, you need a high infectious dose in order to get infection. Whereas in Shigella, because again, I'm repeating myself now to really drive this home, it's resistant to gastric acid, which means that gastric acid won't break it down, which means a smaller infectious dose of this bacteria can go on and cause infection. So that's another key differentiating feature between Salmonella and Shigella. Just like we saw in Salmonella, Shigella is going to invade the intestinal epithelium via the M cells of the pyre patches. So that mechanism is identical. And also like Salmonella, Shigella has a type 3 secretion system, which is sort of a way for the bacteria to inject its toxin directly into a target cell. What's really high yield to know for Shigatoxin, I already mentioned the mechanism, but for whatever reason, test writers like you to know that the mechanism is identical to the mechanism of EHEC or E. coli. So inactivation of the 60S ribosomal subunit, that's going to be the case for Shigatoxin in Shigella and the mechanism of the toxin in EHEC in E. coli. And just like we used the mnemonic before, Shigella, type 3 secretion system. So I think of the L's in Shigella being the number 3. So these are all really high yield facts. Know these for test day. Clinically, Shigella is going to cause three things. One, it's going to cause bacillary dysentery. This is also known as shigellosis. So this is the sort of stereotypical bloody inflammatory mucousy diarrhea. This is probably what's showing up on your exam. So if you have a patient with bloody inflammatory mucoid diarrhea, you already are able to sort of narrow that down to just a few different pathogens, Shigella being one of them. It can cause reactive arthritis, so know that. And very importantly, Shigella can cause hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS. Now, usually on exams, hemolytic uremic syndrome is going to be caused by that O157H7 subtype from E. coli. But that from E. coli is known as a Shiga-like toxin, which is aptly named because Shigella is the Shiga toxin that can cause it. So E. coli got the name of that toxin being Shiga-like because Shigella is where that toxin really originates from. So while on your exam, I would be on the lookout for the, again, the O157H7 subtype, you need to know that Shigella itself can cause hemolytic uremic syndrome. And this is a very high yield disease process for USMLE and COMLEX. So what you need to know is that this is a triad. 
of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. You'll probably see a picture of what's known as a schistocyte. So you see that image here. It's sort of like a sheared red blood cell. If they give you labs, they could give you increased bleeding time. Of course, because we're dealing with an anemia, a decreased hemoglobin. Of course, because we're dealing with a thrombocytopenia, they will give you decreased platelet count because the platelets get consumed. And look for labs consistent with intrinsic renal failure because we're dealing with acute renal failure, hence the name uremic in the disease name. So on your exam, if they're going to give you lab printouts, look at the BUN and look at the creatinine because remember that in an intrinsic renal failure, the BUN to creatinine ratio is going to be usually less than 15. So all of these clues when taken together will help point you in the direction that you're dealing with hemolytic uremic syndrome. And usually on USMLE or COMLEX, this tends to be a third order question where they either give you labs or findings describing HUS, and then they ask you what the potential causative pathogen is. And again, it's probably gonna be O157H7 E. coli. However, know that that E. coli toxin is called Shiga-like because Shigella has the Shiga toxin, which actually does that itself. So that's all you need to know. Again, just to sort of summarize here, very important to be able to differentiate Shigella versus Salmonella and understand that if you see hemolytic uremic syndrome, if you see reactive arthritis, if you see inflammatory diarrhea, those are the big diseases that they're going to go after if they want you to pick this bacteria. Good luck.